Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be seeing if we can recognize rational and irrational numbers in the lesson today. First off, let's talk about rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. For example, negative 5 over 1, 17 and 2 fifths, 7 ninths, 2 thirds, 1 half. These are examples of fractions, and they are rational numbers. Rational numbers can be written as a fraction or as a ratio. Fractions or ratios kind of interchangeable there. Also, rational numbers can be written as a terminating or repeating decimal. Terminating decimals are decimals that end or terminate, and repeating decimals are ones that continue on in repeating patterns. Here are some examples, 0 0.5, 17.4, negative 5, 0 0.66 repeating. Those dots above there means that the sixes just continue on and on. 0 0.77 repeating. Again, so that would be 0 0.77777 going on for um, forever, repeating forever. So those are examples of rational numbers, terminating or repeating decimals, and also fractions. Now let's talk about irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are the opposite of rational numbers. They cannot be written as fractions. They cannot be written as terminating or repeating decimals. And the most common pl place that you find irrational numbers is actually in the square root of non-perfect squares. So let's see some examples of that. The square root of 8. 8 is not a perfect square. So if you take the square root of 8, it will give you an irrational number. The square root of 7, the square root of 3, the square root of 12. So here are some examples of non the square root of non-perfect squares, or in other words, irrational numbers. Now there's one other irrational number, probably the most popular of all the irrational numbers, and that is pi, represented by that symbol there. Pi is an irrational number and it just continues on and on and on. It's like 3.141592654, blah, 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 blah. It keeps going on. So pi is an example of an irrational number. The decimal does not repeat, and it doesn't end. So that is an irrational number. It's not a square root, but it is an example of an irrational number. So let's have our little, um, um, I don't know, activity. Try and figure out if these are rational or irrational numbers. I'll go ahead and start off with this one. 3 and 1 one hundredth. Is that rational or irrational? Well, it's written as a, a number with a fraction. It can be written as a decimal, 3.01, 1 one hundredth. So this is definitely a rational number. It's rational because it can be written as a fraction and as a terminating decimal. How about the square root of 2? Square root of 2 is an irrational number. Here's an approximation of the decimal. It continues on there, continuing on to not give us a pattern. 1.4142135, you can see it. So this is an example of an irrational number. And it does continue on in a non-repeating, non-terminating number. Let's look at another one, the square root of 5. When we approximate this on perhaps a calculator or something, we'll get 2.23606797878. And it continues on there without having a pattern of repetition or without stopping. This is an example of an irrational number. Now let's look at one more rational example, 1 third, which when we take the top divided by the bottom, we'll get 0 0.3333333 repeated forever. It is continuously repeating and it it goes on forever and it's a consistent repetition. This is a repeating decimal. So if you can convert it from a fraction into a repeating decimal, it's definitely a rational number. If it can be written as a fraction, it's a rational number. So that is four examples where you can see rational versus irrational numbers. Quick recap. Rational numbers can be written as a fraction and fractions can be written as terminating or repeating decimals. 
Irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction, therefore they cannot be written as a terminating or a repeating decimal. And for a reference, this is a Common Core Standard listed there and also the PDE Assessment Anchor listed below. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.